No other conference in the world that has these many speakers from around the world. Um, so we are very proud to say that this event is the largest in AppSec. We do have speakers that are uh, well known, as you know from the agenda, from around the world that have come here to talk to you today and, and present new information. Um, so I'm really, really, really happy to see this, this, this kick off. Um, we do have a few standby speakers. I'm actually looking for Chris Weistoppel and for Chris Eng. If you guys are here, please go over to the uh, speaker booth. Uh, we do need your assistance. We also have a lot of press that will be here today. Don't fear the press. This isn't Black Hat. Uh, this is OWASP. Um, so please embrace the press. Let them know. Talk to them about OWASP. Tell them about the things that we do. Um, it's good to get the word out there. Uh, if you're a blogger, please you know, blog up the event. Let them know what the speakers are talking about. You know, good information gets out. That's what we're all about is kind of community awareness. So please, uh, please do that. So for the agenda that you have in your, in your pamphlets and handouts, there's three main rooms. There's the ballroom, which is obviously this room. There's the skyline room, which is on the main floor of the hotel, which when you come in, instead of coming, when you come in, you're going to make a right, if you will, not make a left. You made a left probably to come to the ballroom. You're going to make a right. So that 15 minutes between speakers, if you're going to be changing tracks, simply go to, up to the main level, walk past the bar, stop if you like, and then continue on to, to your track. Uh, the Skyline Room is uh, up there, as well as the Midtown Room. Um, those are the other, the other two tracks that are going on upstairs. Okay. A couple quick thank yous, and we're going to kick off our keynote. Uh, definitely would, uh, so I, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Tom Brennan, for those who don't know me personally. Um, this is definitely a larger than usual New York City meeting. Uh, typically, we uh, have meetings about 200 people here in New York. We have the largest chapter in the world for OWASP. So this, this meeting's a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm looking forward to having a really good event, um, and it's pretty much status quo for the New York crew, uh, just with more, more people. Um, for the OWASP Foundation members, who you'll meet in a moment, uh, but before that, I would like to throw out special thanks uh, and assistance to people in the following order. Uh, Kate Hartman, who is overworking our registration table right now, she's been instrumental in pulling off this event, helping us coordinate it logistically and actually, you know, run it. So when you see Kate, say hi, and please give her a nice thank you. She's been working crazy on this event as as well as the following people. Steve Antonowitz, Tom Ryan, Brian Pfizer, Peter Perfetti, Doug Shin, and Brandy Moore. And of course, we have tons of volunteers here that are helping out, including you. Hence, if you want to help out, just ask if there's something you can do. I'm sure we can find something for you to help out with, okay? With that, we're gonna start kicking off our keynote, so uh, if need be, get a cup of coffee. Again, please move over, to leave no spaces between you and the, and the person next to you. This room will get very crowded very quickly. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name's Jeff Williams. I'm the chair of OWASP, and I'm gonna give a little presentation here about uh, what I see as software's promise, and then we're gonna hear from some other members of the OWASP board. So let me go ahead and, and get started. The board is Dennis Cruz, Dave Wickers, uh, Sebastian Deerslayer, and Tom Brennan. Deer Snyder? Sorry. Okay, so I first discovered software in San Francisco about 25 years ago. I was at the Exploratorium and they had a display of Conway's Game of Life. And when I saw it, I, I got that first sense of how software, we, we can use software to create whatever we want. David Gerlenter calls software a virtual machine. He means like a nuts and bolts physical machine, but infinitely malleable. Since that day, I've loved software. I hate computers, but I've loved software. <laughs> and I know we're only scratching the surface of what we can do with software. We're gonna see some truly awesome applications that can extend our human capabilities. That, to me, is software's promise. But we're at a tipping point. As we speak, a major financial organization is building software to create an online space where their associates and their clients can work together to do transactions in the cloud through their browsers. It's fantastic. It's like you have this virtual monogamous relationship with your bank in cyberspace. But there's a problem. Your bank application is really sleeping around with a whole bunch of other browsers. 
And to be honest, your browser's sleeping around with a whole bunch of web applications, and nobody's using protection. So here's the problem. As we make more and more connections, the threat surface, the attack surface, goes up exponentially. At the same time, the value of the assets that we're putting into these applications is getting dramatically, is dramatically increasing. And we're using technology that's so new that nobody has any real idea of whether it's secure or not yet. And lastly, to be quite honest, we're really struggling with some of the basic security stuff, the most, the simplest security problems like input validation. So put all that together and you see that we're creating an enormous amount of security risk. Risk that's already hampering software's promise. So I'm torn. On the one hand, we're starting to build the, app, the kinds of applications that I always dreamed of, but it only is going to work if everyone trusts each other. So let's confront some of the brutal facts facing application security. Here in this room, we understand something that the rest of the world is only vaguely understands. We know we're taking crazy risks with software. We know that in the past 15 years, the threat has rocketed forward while the way we build software has essentially remained unchanged. So here it is. We, you and I, are failing. We know that the software market is, is producing insecure code, and we haven't done anything really to change it. So I'm here today to challenge you. What can we do to change our market, minimize our risk, and fulfill software's promise. So I'm going to suggest a few things that we can do to get you thinking about it. So one thing we can do is we can get our priorities straight. Many organizations spend most of their application security budget on hacking, basically, doing pen tests and scanning. Now, there's nothing wrong with those things. They're important, but we're not going to hack ourselves secure. We can perform all of our activities in the context of an organizational risk model. With that understanding, we can prioritize what we do, not by what's easy for a tool to find, but by what actually matters to organizations. We can guide organizations to focus on the most critical problems in their most critical applications. And when we find a problem, we can't just report it and walk away. We have to dig in and find the root cause of that problem so that we can eliminate it from the organization. That's the path to improvement. So second thing we can do. We can, we can set a useful research agenda. We've got an amazing pool of secure, brilliant security researchers around the world. But we spend an awful lot of time searching for really obscure vulnerabilities that would make Rube Goldberg proud. The really hard problems in application security are going large.